Nope. How about now? Nope. How about oh? I'm riding down the road, I'm recording this shit, listen to me now, I've got a show, I make it up as I go along, cause you know, it is the best place to be, to get your games, reality and news, and my views, everything I'm saying right now is made up, just like the show, if you don't like it, shut up and just go! There's lots of people that like when I talk about things and stuff and such. That's the way I get shit done in this life. You should try it once. Maybe you'll get a whole pile of friends. Welcome to the Very Supreme Broadcast of Honor podcast, Drivecast, with Mike from the Very Supreme Broadcast of Honor. I am here today to do another podcast about gaming. You know, we're a gaming channel mostly, so why not? Thanks for tuning in. I'm assuming I'm putting this up on YouTube and maybe some other places, not sure. At this point, recording this podcast, I still have not uploaded any, but I kind of dropped the bomb on uh, the Saturday live stream uh, just passed. And when you're listening to this, that may be weeks ago or months ago, I don't even know. But uh, I told I told people that I had a little podcast going on in mind. That's about all I said. In fact, Higgins doesn't even really know about this yet. <laughs> he will know soon enough before I put it up. Obviously, that's a that's a decision or a, a conversation between business partners, of course. So um, today, uh, well, thanks for being here. Today, I want to talk about multiplayer communication in games and I'll, I'll get into that in a bit at this point uh, because I haven't released any of these podcasts yet I don't know what intro or outro I'm using uh, just today I, which is going to be weird but I recorded the intro and outro that I wanted to make uh, while I was driving I did that with some great piece of software I guess it's software I guess an app um, that allows me to record multi-track and uh, loops into the next track when I'm done recording one track and plays the other one back so it's hands-free all very safe and cool that's technology for you so I was able to start the recording while I was parked and then pull away start recording when I was done one track and just I was silent it would automatically go to the next multi-track and start playing the first track so I could record over top of it It was all very cool that's why it sound the recording sound like shit but it was on purpose because um, that's what happens when you're recording in a car using an iPhone 3GS. Yes, that's right. I use an iPhone 3GS. Really old, but you know what? It does every... Look, I'm recording this podcast on it. I'm, I recorded the intro and outro on it. Um, but again, we're, we're, we're accepting intros and outros for the, this podcast. If you want to record your own, please send it to tbsboh at gmail.com and just indicate somehow that it's an intro for this podcast or an outro for this podcast, your name, um, any other information you might want to include, like a um, uh, your you know like a YouTube channel or a, a, a music channel, anything you want to include that that I'll share in the description of the video uh, if I'm uploading this to YouTube, which it should be. So. Thanks for tuning in. Um, this is a podcast that I record while I'm driving home from work. I have an hour and a half drive home from work, so the odd time, if inspiration strikes me, I will pull over and start this recorder and just rant and rage and inform and share my views and opinions. And that's how it rolls. It's, it's very improv I don't script this before. I don't do any research beforehand. So thanks very much for tuning in. Uh, what else did I want to say ahead of time? I'm not really sure. I'll give you all the info about TBSBOH, which is the very spring broadcast of honor, at the end of this podcast. Hopefully I'll remember to do that. And you can check us out, and I'll give you all the information then. So without further ado, thanks very much. This is like the, hmm, I can't even remember, fourth or fifth podcast. Uh, once again, I do no preparation for this show, and the microphone quality is shitty because you're going to hear every car sound in my shitty car. 
and the roads in Canada in the winter are very bumpy and, and noisy, so you can hear me right now probably going over a bumpy road. So I apologize, but that's that's the nature of this podcast, and it's, it's unique in that way. If you cannot stand the sound, if you get annoyed by, like, just the ambient noise of the inside of a car, plus, you know, all the exterior noise, I apologize. Please check out our videos and our live streams and stuff for better quality, because we do value good quality microphones. We have good quality microphones in little studios that we record games in and we play live in and all that. Um, so check us out that way if you want a better quality product. And as you know by now, or if it's your first time um, listening, <clears throat> there's plenty of uh, throat clearing and breaks. I have asthma and after a whole day of being awake, and especially the cold and nighttime brings on more cold, my asthma gets a little bit worse. Today's a pretty particularly bad day. So I apologize in advance for any throat clearing, swallowing, um, raspiness in my voice, pauses. There's a lot of pauses when I'm thinking about what to say because, again, it's all... Anyway, without further ado, today I thought I'd talk about multiplayer communication in gaming. This is something that I've been thinking a lot about over my life because multiplayer games in general are things that I have wanted since I started playing games um, and not just not just multiplayer games I mean online multiplayer games and for those of you born in the 2000s or around there maybe online multiplayer games always existed from the time you were able to use a computer or if you're in the 90s maybe that's the case too I was born in the early 80s I was born in 1981 so I was born very very early um, in the 80s and so I it's life has been exciting for me in that I got to see technology develop to what it is today whereas some people listening may have that was just a reality for you your entire life it was like that so um, definitely I this is something that's I, I, I always wanted was was online but I, we'll get to that we'll get to that I'm, I'm jumping ahead um, I started playing games when I was, I'm going to say three, so like in 1984, maybe 1983, as soon as I could, you know, grasp the concepts and they were available to me, because back then there were some games or arcade places and things like that, even before I was born, but they weren't readily accessible to a three-year-old necessarily. Um, talking late 70s I believe for arcades uh, or maybe around the time I was born or when I was young but anyway regardless as soon as I could grasp the concept of gaming and it was available it was financially available to, to everybody and it was you know uh, something my parents could afford I was playing games so I really started playing games uh, with these little handheld games now <laughs> I talk so nostalgically, but for a lot of you, you know, again, they may have been already there. And I'm saying a lot of generalizing uh, based on our YouTube population that watches our videos. But um, you can play, you know, Nintendo 3DS now, and, and those sort of things are current. Um, but back in those days, this is pre the first Game Boy, okay? the green and green screen Game Boys, um, there were little handheld green screen, again, games, but it's sort of like green and black. They were very simple, extremely simple games, and I'm talking like, like one frame per two seconds. No, one frame per second, that's probably more realistic. One, two, maybe a little faster than that. I'm gonna say two frames per second. Like, like that um, that's what the game was like and it wasn't like whatever was on the screen like the screen didn't move so like you know what I mean like um, oh, I'm getting stuck behind a real slow caravan of cars and that pisses me off when I'm trying to drive an hour and a half I don't need delays by people going like 30 in an 80 zone so please correct that vehicles could you could you do it 
There's a transport in the mix, always a piss off, but they're not the one causing the problems. There's like a slow ass car, I guess. I don't know. I'm gonna have to do some high speed passing at some point to really get home at a reasonable time. Such a piss off. Anyway, uh, really slow games. A couple frames per second. Oh my God, there's a whole caravan of cars behind me. No, I hate caravans of cars. So yeah, two frames per second. And like, so you'd be looking at, think about a Game Boy screen. I'm talking like original Game Boy, like that big, uh, that coloring, it's so like green and black or just green on dark, or dark green on lighter green. And simple controls, left and right side of the screen sort of like a more of a Sega configuration for a portable game and literally the game sounds like this so each zip you'd be holding the right control uh, to go right and your little guy on the screen would be like blip, blip, blip. so that would be him moving or her whatever it was on the screen it um, I was picturing Mario in my mind, that's why I said him. Oh, are people turning here? Good. Let's lose some of this caravan. Is this, no, transport's not turning. Shit. You always love when the slow people turn off the road. Anyway, um, so like you, you got your little person, dude, guy, woman, alien, blob, circle, square, whatever it was. You'd be holding right to it, blip, blip, and it would just be moving that slow, like, and refreshing. On, like you, the screen would go blank in between the blips, okay? So you, you see something on the screen, you go blank, and then another blip, and you'd see where it was then, and another blip would go blank, and then, so every other frame, like blip, blank, blip, blank, blip, blank, it'd be like that. Uh, for those of you who've never played one of these handheld games, that's what they were called, handheld games. Uh, Tyco or Tiger, I can't remember the names of the manufacturers. Um, but, okay, I'm going to pass this person. Anyway, those games were really, um, they were really fun because that was before, that was like the first, you could play those games in your bedroom, you know, in your bed at night or whatever, you could turn the sound off and just play, no one knows you're playing. It was awesome, man. That was before cell phones, that was before any of the stuff, the conveniences we have today for entertainment in your own room when you're a kid, like that was, that blew your mind, so you'd play that. Then they came out with like little poker games and stuff like that that were made out of the same green on green screen, a couple frames per second, those kind of games. This again is pre the first Game Boy. So I was lucky to have some of that. I was really lucky to have uh, parents that were into technology, especially my dad. Um, they were really like my dad had one of the, like some of the first little personal planners PDAs uh, Really simple had a little calendar on it a little memo you could write like this one string of text That didn't go all the way like you, it wasn't a big screen So you had to like scroll across the screen to keep seeing what you had wrote in, the, in a little note to yourself Man cool shit, so I'm, I'm lucky because I got to see the tech like technology develop So um, of course, there were multiplayer games in, eventually, um, and now we're talking Game Boy. I remember, but even before that, like ColecoVision in television. My dad had something called Intellivision. Now, that was from the 70s. That was a console for your home. That was before personal computers, man. It was fucking awesome. It was like Pong, shit like that on this thing. It connected. It was this big piece of furniture looking thing. It connected directly to your directly to your uh, TV and, and it, you had to sit in front of a little turn a little knob. If I remember I'll put a link in the description of this wherever you're seeing this and you can see what I'm talking about and it was totally fun. That was multiplayer. Multiplayer games were the best. Even if it wasn't multiplayer when technology and games first came around you know, you were excited, even if someone else was playing the game, you were excited just to sit there and watch them play it and then know that your turn was coming up. Even if you didn't get a turn, I was always cool with that. Like, even if there was no turn for me, it was just this person playing a game, I could sit for hours and watch people play games. And I think that's part of the human nature. And I think I've talked about that in one of the podcasts before, is watching people play games. It's, it's fucking cool, right? So, it's, it's like watching TV or a movie, but it's interactive. So... 
um, it's something that, that's been ingrained in, in, in society since movies. That voyeurism, that excitement of, of just watching a story unfold, but games are even more exciting because you can change it. So, um, yeah, so I got to see that develop. So, you know, you got the multiplayer games, like, um, when the first Game Boy, well, I mean, Nintendo, the first Nintendo was multiplayer right off the bat. Amazing. That was the first real home console that took off. Again, that Intellivision thing was fucking multiplayer. There are two knobs on the damn thing. One person would have to sit there on the left, the other person on the right. Or you could play, you know, multiplayer on your own, but that was kind of boring in a way. It was more of a novelty, but two people could play that damn thing. That was amazing. That was in the 70s, I believe. That was really early on. <clears throat> With the popularization of, of video games, the first Nintendo console, um, I had, did I have two controllers? I don't even know if I ever had two controllers. I don't think I did. I think I only had the one, unless it came with two. Hmm. I don't know, it was cool though, because my dad, see, I don't even know where my parents like knew about this stuff. So, I got an Atari before Nintendo. I got an Atari about the time Nintendo came out, and that was cool. Um, I was lucky, you know, that my parents were into that. Nintendo was too too expensive for the average household to buy when it first came out. Now, when Nintendo first came out, I think it was like $110 or something like that. Now, that may that may seem like on par with... T well, not doesn't seem on par. What am I talking about? The uh, PlayStation was like 400 bucks. So 100 bucks, you think, what the hell? But that was like back then. That was like $400 back in like 1984 or some shit. Whatever. Anyway, um, it was cheap, but it wasn't, I don't know, it was expensive, especially for our family at that time. So I got an Atari when Nintendo came out, but Atari had two paddles with one button on it that you pushed, and so that you could do multiplayer there. Then Nintendo came out, multiplayer, Sega Genesis, uh, sorry, Sega Master System, all that stuff. So each console had multiple controllers and games that had multiple people playing it, and that was amazing, right? So that was legit, that was fun, everyone liked that, you know, you could sit around with your friends, you could have parties around these things, you could have just like full day sessions, and I did, definitely, it's probably where my, my gaming addiction came from, started around then, you know, as my, my, not only my number one form of entertainment, but the number one thing I wanted to do, like I, like in my adult life, if I'm, if I have free time, I want to play video games, you know what I mean? So, anyway, again, I really want to cover gaming addiction in some episode. <sighs> I want to think about that one a little more if I can. Uh, this is a turning lane. I shouldn't try to pass this caravan right now. There will be a place to pass legitimately up here, so I'll just wait it out, wait it out. Don't take risks on the road, you know? Like, wait for the right time. Oh, the sun's going down right now. The sun's just disappearing behind the horizon. Right now. Beautiful. Amazing. Get to see the sunset on the way home. It's kind of cool. Um, but, yeah, so I I always love that. Love the multiplayer aspect where you're, you're playing with your friends, you know. Fucking Nintendo 64, Goldeneye, all that shit. So... <laughs> Um, if I'm just thinking about it now, the the real the real development for me was um, the internet, obviously, because some of the stuff was pre-internet or when the internet was fresh. Multiplayer games did kind of develop their uh, sorry online multiplayer games kind of developed because I remember Microsoft built in there was like a multiplayer chess. That was some of the first mo online multiplayer stuff, was online multiplayer chess, checkers, that sort of thing. Very basic uh, game requirements that they were able to transmit over the internet in real time. It was, there was a little bit of a delay, I remember when it first came out, because you're using like a dial-up, like 28.8 baud modem. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look that shit up. Like, that's dial-up. If I say dial-up, a lot of people remember that. Or if not, look that up. Um, but the 
so multiplayer sort of came in in, in that regard um, and, and thus was born online multiplayer uh, gaming and with that online multiplayer communication now this is what I really wanted to talk about so I gave a little backstory there online multiplayer it, it developed it started to become more robust I, I was like aching for it because I was such a gamer I was aching for like more online online multiplayer games because at this point you could play a ton of games like console games and PC games there was a ton of cool games but there weren't really a lot of online multiplayer games that you could play um, like trying to think back here like Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, around the Nintendo 64 era you really wish you could just play with your friends but from your own house like the thought was there because you could play like chess and checkers through like the internet a little bit and there was all these things so there was really a desire for, for online multiplayer so once it developed, once it came into being, oh I, I was rambling and I didn't notice I was in the double lane place here I'm just gonna go ahead and get ahead of the pack because I can't fucking stand being behind people driving way too slow down uh, a road that I have to travel it's not a major highway it's just like one lane each way so when you get stuck behind a caravan and there's nowhere to pass it's such a fucking aggravation when you have to drive for so long and uh, but luckily the way that I drive back and forth to work it does break into like two lanes on one side for a little while so it gives you a chance to pass which is good another way that I drive to and from work is I have to drive to another town some days for, for different reasons um, it, it doesn't have like anywhere to pass barely and you're just stuck anyway um, so once online multiplayer came into being you're playing games like the original Battlefield uh, like Battlefield 1940 was it 2 or 9 I can't remember um, and like that, I'm thinking those type of games. I'm thinking about um, just other simple games in Windows, like not Minesweeper, but like there were some other multiplayer games uh, around the time they came out with the pinball for Windows and stuff like that. You got these multiplayer things. Websites started hosting. Um, turn-based multiplayer online games where you could you play you go in and you play your point like you have so many turns that you can play so you do that and then and like everyone else in the game there, there's a lot of different ways that it worked and, and um, you would play multiplayer online website you play your turn for point like you have so many points to play or so many moves or so many attacks, or so many whatever. So things kept getting more and more complex. Um, and then there was the original Xbox, and that had the online console multiplayer thing with Xbox Live, revolutionary situations where you could sit and play console games online, uh, talking through a microphone. And, and, and this is where shit got real. And this is where, this is some of the points I wanted to make, because today, even on Twitter today, and who knows again when this episode will come out, um, whether or not you've seen, I posted on Twitter today about Dota 2, and I, in previous podcasts I've mentioned how much I love Dota 2, but today, this morning I played before work, as I said, I'm really addicted to the game, and I, I have time before work to play one game, and if it gets messed up, you know, I don't have time to quit. Well, you can't really quit Dota games, because if you do, you get penalized, and actually did that recently. I played the random ability draft and every one of my team's picks were so bad and the other team was so good and every one of my team was just like literally screaming into the microphone and you can mute that so I muted everyone then they started like typing in chat really vulgar and really rude and really like aggressive and, and just like ruining the game experience and I actually quit the game and started a new game uh, because it was just so vile. Dota does not have a way, I'll get into this, Dota doesn't have a way to mute the chat. You can mute microphones, but you can't mute the chat. So, just a real piss off. Oh, some cars overheated, maybe it looks like they're shit. Um, they look okay, though, people are there. Anyway, <clears throat> I'll get into that, but yeah, so, 
Um, but that's really my point. Um, once, once online communication became available and accepted in games, because it took a little while for, pe for it to catch on, especially in certain games, like uh, PC games especially, people even now don't use the, the microphones as much as people do on consoles. For some reason, console gaming, online voice chat really took off and really caught on. <clears throat> One of the reasons I think that happened <clears throat> one of the reasons I think that online multiplayer um, PC type chat caught on and the voice didn't was that it's you have a whole keyboard in front of you it's it's totally easy to while you're playing just hit the enter button for chat type in what you want to say hit enter and then continue playing the game um, yes you do stop what you're doing in the game to do that but it's easy enough to quickly type out like you know go over there or hey watch out or I'm over here or whatever that's easy to type out in chat just as easy to type out in chat is fuck you you know racial slur racial slur um, I did your mom whatever hurtful thing uh, volatile comment whatever whatever it's easy just to go, fuck you, hit enter, fuck you, hit enter again, and continue on with what you're doing. <clears throat> Where, and, you know, you don't, there's more an anonymity with not talking in your voice. You can just type it out, and it doesn't matter what you sound like or what your situation is. If you're, like, mom's in the next room, you can still type out fuck you if you want to, and there's no repercussions. With... Um, console gaming there's no keyboard usually or if there is a way to type in game it's ridiculously long and hard to do so there's no like people don't go for that they just use their voice and it's, it's just easier so I think that's why there's the difference between the two PC game it's usually chat in terms of I mean like type chat and in, um, in console games it's usually voice Lately on PC, and I'm, I'm pretty much strictly a PC gamer, lately there's some games of PC where voice has really taken off, where games that are hyper quick, where you really need to communicate with a team, and uh, where like microsecond action really like, it really matters to the game in, in, in some people's eyes, not mine, but in people who are super serious about the game they're playing, uh, being able to say, hey, look out, is, is so much quicker than hitting enter, not moving yourself, and, and typing out what you want to say, and being clear in, in you know, typing communication. Um, I'm thinking about Dota in that situation. It's really weird, because when you think of console games with multiplayer chat, voice chat, you think of like Call of Duty or even like Battlefield or those games um, and, and people are using their voice to sort of communicate with their teammates. The problem is if there's 64 fucking people on your team, I guess console didn't make it up to 64 in some games. 34 people or 32, whatever. Sometimes you're only, you're broken up into squads and you only talk in squad chat, so I guess that makes sense. Um, but anyway, it's get playing and I've watched videos of console uh, play of like Call of Duty or whatever and you get people just chirp, 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 you know, like, fuck you, you piece of shit, why didn't you go over there? Or if it's a whole game chat, they're chirping to the other team. So um, in PC, it's usually type chat, uh, smack talk back and forth. Battlefield 3 for PC, I believe, has voice chat, and it's very rare that you hear somebody talking in voice chat. It's always laggy. Um, it just, people just don't go for that so much in, in PC. So that's sort of a little bit of a difference between PC and console communication, multiplayer. But one of the main points I wanted to get to was this, what happened to me to this morning, and it's happened. I thought I was able to pass that guy, but the pass line is done. I can't see him. He's ill. There's people coming. Good thing I didn't go. Trust your gut. Trust your gut. Um, but this person's driving too slow. Anyway, the 
point I want to, to touch on was this morning when I, and it fucking like, okay, I need a little backstory here for myself personally. I'm an adult, okay? I'm 33 years old. I'm a grown man, you know, uh, whatever. Like, I've been through a lot in my life. I have a job, stay job, you know. I have, a, you know, a home and, and all this. I should be, you know, able to take shit, you know, from kids or other adults and um, stuff should just be able to roll off me because I'm an adult. But because of my background and the way that my life has been and my life experience, um, I was heavily bullied as a kid. And, you know, I was always the weird kid and I was always this and that. I put up with a lot of shit. Um, some physical bullying, emotional, mental, all that. I went through a ton of shit. And so, as an adult, I'm, I'm a little bit insecure. I'm a little bit, you know, a little bit shy in, in certain circumstance. Um, I stick up for others. I, you know, I do social work for a living. Because I want to help others who are having a tough time in their life. You know, I've been depressed, I've been all this other stuff, and I've gotten through certain things. And, you know, here I am today, doing what I'm doing. I feel that I can lead sometimes. I feel that, you know, I feel comfortable entertaining others and making them happy and, and so on. So that's sort of been a, a, a main vein through my life is, you know, trying to help others and be kind to others and uh, make other people happy in whatever way I can, through my work or through TBSBOH or whatever, um, that's making people happy is like my life's goal. And part of that is, I think I've always felt that way when I was a kid, it's just, it's, I'm altruistic by nature, but I've always been bullied, so I see the, the damage that gets done through bullying. And nowadays, it's fucking rampant. When I was a kid, bullying was done in person. Bullying was done, like, very rarely would someone, like, leave a note on your doorstep or something that, um, you know, was a bullying or send you a bullying letter. It did happen, I'm sure. <clears throat> but, um, you know, bullying was done at school, usually, or in the workplace, or at home. Um, but... You know, my bullying took place at school mostly. So it was, you know, you, you, you had to deal with all that shit. Nowadays, people have to deal with cyberbullying. And that's mainly what ha what is happening in these games. And something that pisses me off so much. And I it really affects me. I get really upset. And to the point where I'll just stop playing the game and focus in on that bully. And, you know, then people start being like, oh, just chill out. Anyway, I'll explain. So this morning I was playing Dota and uh, I was playing random ability draft as I, as I do. I love that game. It's so entertaining even if you fucking lose. It's still entertaining because you, you can't, you don't know what abilities other people have. I mean you can push the tilde key or the tab key, I can't remember. And you can see what they have but you don't have time or you don't really focus on that. Uh, but it's new and exciting that other people can't sort of like judge what you're going to have until you start using your abilities. Anyway, I really enjoy it. It's, it's been a lot of fun. But this morning, and this has happened before, but this morning it just got to me. I guess I'm having an emotional day. I'm, I'm a really like emotional person and and I for whatever reason I just woke up this morning. I wasn't feeling the best. You know, I thought about calling in sick to work just to have a mental health day because I just I wasn't feeling great, you know? And um, so don't even use a blinker. I'm, I'm about to get on the hot major highway here. Don't even use a blinker, buddy, and slow down at the last minute. Could you please do that? That'd be great. Like I said, that emotional day. Anyway, um, so I'm playing, you know, I get, and part of the problem with the game, not a problem, but part of the excitement or, or challenge to the, to the random ability draft is you, you, not only are you choosing random abilities for your character, you get a random character. So you don't even know, I'm not, and personally, I'm not good with the, the tank characters, the upfront characters. Could you get out of the passing lane, please? Thank you, fuckface. I get so mad when I'm driving, not really, but I just, I verbalize my anger, I don't take it, I don't have road rage, I used to. 
long time ago, but I don't get road rage anymore. Um, I just verbalize it. I don't take it out on my driving. I'm just like, fuck you, buddy. And then I move on, you know? Um, but anyway, you'll hear me verbalize during this podcast instead of being like, I don't hit things. I don't drive up people's, like, I don't tailgate. I don't, like, push people off the road. I don't do any of that shit. I just verbalize it. That's how I deal with my road, my ex road rage. I don't really have it. Anyway, so the smart, so part of, like, part of the thing with the Dota multiplayer is that I don't, like, I'm not good at um, tank characters or damage characters. Like, the characters have to get in the action. Any game, really. I'm not good at that. I'm good at, like, sniping positions. I'm good at, like, distance tactics and things like that. That's what I'm good at. And that's how I enjoy playing games. So, if I'm choosing my character in Dota, I'll choose, like, Drow or... um, Drow Ranger is the name, or um, Sniper, or Viper, or any character that is distance. I'm better at distance characters, or characters with invisibility abilities, or stuff like that, you know? Uh, in, I really enjoy being a sniper in Battlefield. It's just, oh, that's cheap, you should get up front, you know, like a real man. But I, what are you talking about? It's a fucking video game, and I'll get to that. Um, anyway, so... Yeah, so this morning I get a character that's up front and personal. It's like a damage tank type character where my attack is I have to go right up to the other people and be in the action. Where I'm not comfortable with it, I'm not good at it. I usually don't do well. And whatever. Um, and the main point is it's just a fucking game. And so so I get the character. I get some half-decent things. When In the random ability that I'm talking Dota here, if you don't understand it, you can glaze, o- glaze out like zone out whatever you need to do uh, to get through but I personally um, I guess I can stay in this lane I personally uh, try to get like a ranged attack for a a usual tanky character because again I'm better at at the, the ranged attack skills so and stuns and things like that that are ranged so I tried to get some of those I could not get any so I had to be up right in the action I knew I was going to suck I was pissed off well I wasn't pissed I was sad because that's I get one game in the morning and that's it if it turns out shitty with the random abilities then too bad but it's also the most exciting mode so I play it so I get this I get like the worst character the worst abilities that I can like decent abilities but they were worse for my gameplay style so I just I just went with it and um, didn't do well My teammates, I had some complete noob teammates, and you know when you do, because they're like just totally sucking at what they're doing. They're not helping out the team. They're they're trying, you can tell, but they're just they're just not doing the right things. You can tell they're brand new in the game. And again, Dota has the steepest goddamn learning curve. So you know, and again, the way I am, I give people, I give those people slack. I realize they're brand new. I try to help them out if I can. I give them some advice as we're playing. I'm like, whoa, 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 get back, get back. And I'm typing. I don't do voice in Dota. People are sleeping in my house. I can't be talking late night or early morning sometimes. Unless it's a late stream or whatever. But, um, yeah, I I tend to um, be easy on those people. So, we're playing Dota and this one person's not doing too well. And because they're not doing well, and I'm in a a role where I'm sucking, I'm not doing great. So, my, it's, when the the other, okay, for me, because I'm really sensitive to bullying, when the other team bullies you, it's not as much of a big deal, because it's the other team, they're just lipping off or bragging that they're doing well, whatever. You should have went through that yellow light, man. Not me and this other guy in front of me. Anyway. Um, yeah, but when the other team is like, you know, lipping off, it doesn't bother me as much. You just sort of take it and you just ignore them, whatever, whatever. So my main problem comes when my own teammates start, um, 
lipping off to me or my other teammates and being really rude, be like, you know, racial slurs or, you know, especially on microphone, it's even more volatile than just in chat, but even in chat, it's pretty awful. It's like, oh, you stupid motherfucking piece of shit. You know, you, you can't even play this fucking game. Look at your score, you stupid piece of shit. We're losing this game because of you. Fuck you, you know, delete the game. Go fuck yourself. So when they start with that, I ignore it because whatever. People get angry. They're playing a game. They're involved in their emotions are involved in it for whatever reason. Maybe they're addicts. You know, they're really hardcore into the game. You know, they, they're trying to get their their stats up. Whatever it is, right? So I ignore it for the first bit. But there's only so much you can ignore. So they start lipping on the on the microphone and I can't even concentrate in the game. I just mute them, big deal, mute them, no problem. But when they start um, chatting to you through the type uh, type chat, it's a little harder to ignore because it's on your screen. It's like, fuck, this is so depressing, whatever. You still kind of ignore them, you don't type back to them, whatever. The worst fucking thing in Dota, so that's bad enough and that shit shouldn't happen. Like, you should be able to mute all chat all the time in every game. So you can play the game without anybody doing that. Plus, Dota has the system where you can you can click on the screen with an exclamation mark, and it goes doing 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 doing. I can't do the noise, and I can't remember it right now. But it, it, it creates this like alert noise. It's really annoying. So someone could sit there and like ding 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 ding, ding on your character while you're trying to play. It's the 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 reasoning for that is so it's to tell you like look over here on the map guys like it's just another way to like try to help your team out like oh they went the enemy went this way go this way or whatever with it with a click of your mouse and it's just like ding look over here um or you can like click a different way and it puts an x like don't go that way don't go that way so that's helpful to actual players that are actually using it properly but players that aren't using it properly it's abuse it's communication abuse you can report in dota which is another cool thing but sometimes you get a shitty team where you're not doing well. The whole t your whole team will report you, and then you'll get penalized even though you didn't do anything. It's fucking awful. Anyway, it's so depressing that way. But anyway, this guy starts lipping, and another guy starts joining in with them, and they're like being really rude, so I mute them, and then they just go on the chat. They go on and on the chat to me, and just to our team. It's like team chat. They're just like being like, "You're so stupid. Fuck you." You know, oh, look what you did again. Yeah, you should have used your this and that. And I'm like, I couldn't. I didn't have any mana. And they're like, fuck you. You should have had better skills. They're just ignoring your, your defense and just being assholes, right? And they exist. And you try to ignore them. That's the key. Ignore, 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 ignore. But when the chat is like going up your screen and you can barely see what's going on because their chat's on the screen and it's hurtful and rude, whatever. It's just awful experience. So you report them for communication abuse. The, like one out of 10 reports that I've reported, um, they've, uh, they've actually taken action on, so it's worth, it's worth doing. But, um, you know, you, you do it and you just try to ignore them. My main problem is, is when, so that's bad and that's awful, and that's one of the things I hate about multiplayer online chat. Um, voice or type chat um, it's just awful and people need to grow the fuck up um, I try to stick up for other people and then I just get attacked there's only so much you can ignore it really does hurt people's feelings and it really does ruin it like really affected my day um, so all this shit but here's the, the coup de gras here's the real the finishing move of trolls and bully, cyber bullies um, is when they especially in Dota it's when they get the other team it's what so this this pisses me off more than anything else you're playing Dota and your your teammates tell the other team what you're doing in the game like you can't see what the other team's doing um, until you come upon them or t whatever they tell oh I could take my sunglasses off it's getting dark they tell the other team what you're doing they're like hey go to this location right now because this guy's doing this it's like fuck you that, that makes me so mad. So they've been cyberbullying you this whole time. And then they go ahead and they, they, get the, uh, they tell the other team where you are. They ruin, completely ruin the game for you. And you report them for that. But you only get three reports for I don't know how often your reports get refilled. So sometimes you don't have any um, reports left. 
Um, oh, there's some major delays on the road ahead here in town. Crazy. I'm almost home. Anyway, so that was fucking awful. That's, that's happened to me twice now where the bullies, after you mute them and you ignore the chat and then maybe try to stick up for yourself or other people or whatever, then they start telling the other team where you are. It's fucking, it's the worst thing. They're like, ha, 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 I told them that. So if anyone plays Dota, there is Ro Ro Roshan, uh, which is one of the big enemies on the map. It's sort of neutral. You can just, it just sits in one place and you can go try to kill it. It's a really hard boss sort of thing. Um, so I was playing with, not this morning, but I was playing with uh, Ursa another time. And you can, one of the things about Ursa is you can solo Rosh. So our team wasn't doing well, but I had an opportunity. The other team was mostly dead. I had an opportunity using Ursa to go and kill Rosh, and I was doing fine. And then one of these cyber bully people who was bullying me because I wasn't doing the best. I wasn't doing bad, actually, but I wasn't doing too good, and I stuck up for another guy that wasn't doing well. Um, I was soloing Rosh, and I was just about killed Rosh to get, like, a big bonus for the whole team. And he told them I was there. They all came and fucking killed me. I was so mad. Anyway, um, cyber... No, it's my right away, bitch. Fuck you. Uh, I wasn't... It sounded like I was accelerating toward that person, but actually my tires were just spinning on the slush. Anyway, um, just about home here. Cyberbullying and, like, online communication, it's really shitty. Is I think that's... Even though I'm just improvising this whole thing, I think that's probably my main thing, is that cyberbullying is really shitty, and uh, I want to just say, like... Um, you know, if you're online, stick up for other people who are being bullied and um, ignore people as much as you can. And if there's a way to report people in any game, definitely report them. Even if you have to go to a forum to report them to like a server admin or something, just do that. Try. Let's try to clean up. <laughs> I know that's hilarious. Um, you can't, especially with the, the internet and the anonymity of the internet, you can't uh, totally clean that up, but do your part. Don't be a fucking troll. If you're mad at somebody because they're not doing well in the game, just ignore them. Just move on with your game. Do the best you can. Even if you're going to lose the game because of one person is doing their best or whatever. If someone's being a troll and not playing properly, report them too. But if people are just trying, it's just a game. You know what I mean? I don't need, I don't have time because I'm home now. I'm parked in my parking spot, but. Um, you know, no one really has time. I'm going to turn off my car. You're going to hear me talk without the car on. But no one has time to, you know, completely go into the bullying thing. Um, at least I don't right now. So, uh, but, uh, you know, do your part to, to try to help clean that shit up. Make it a better experience for everybody, including yourself. And, um, and we'll all be better off, you know. We're playing with all different age groups here. You have to understand some people may be eight years old playing a game with you, or they might be 60, or anywhere in between. They might be having a bad day, a good day. They might be, you know, disabled. They might be, you know, just their keyboard's broken. You don't know. Uh, their mom just died last week, and they're just playing a game to feel better. What you don't like, honestly, you don't know what's going on in their life. So definitely uh, just. Don't be a fucking troll. Try to make the game better for everyone, including yourself. Stick up for people who are being bullied. Report people and uh, just try to get along. And hopefully we can start making... And hopefully game developers will start implementing better ways. At least be able to mute voice and text chat plus any sort of in-game like alert systems like in Dota. You need to be able to mute all of that out. Someone was saying to me today on Twitter that... Uh, League of Legends, you can actually get rid of the, vo the uh, voice and text chat. I may switch over to League of Legends, even though I don't know that I like it as much because it looks a little too cartoony for me. I don't like the style, but I'll switch if I can't get rid of these goddamn trolls. Anyway, uh, that's my 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 uh, the t <laughs> very spring broadcast of honor podcast drivecast for today for this episode. Thanks very much for for sticking around, listening to me ramble on and. <clears throat> clear my throat and um, and put up with the, the driving sounds. I appreciate it. And if you have any comments about what I've talked about today or anything you'd like to hear, please put it in the comments below on YouTube or wherever this is posted. 
Thanks very much. Um, to get in touch with us, it's tvsboh at gmail.com for any intro or outro submissions. If you want to follow us on Twitter, it's twitter.com slash tvsboh, youtube.com slash tvsboh, facebook.com slash tvsboh, and we also uh, broadcast right now three times a week on twitch.tv slash tvsboh. Thanks very much for joining us. Burritos forever. Love you guys. Take care. See ya. Bye-bye. The podcast is over And I was glad that you were here If you ever need to pick me up Just send us a tweet Or watch our videos Or live stream Or just sing this song I like burritos, I like burritos, I like burritos, man. I like burritos, I like burritos, that's the end of the podcast.